uh, via my and, and I'll just upload it on YouTube. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. So yeah, welcome yeah. to. Welcome to the Kill Your Addiction Show. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm on the other line with Dr. Robin Timso, and he's been my acupuncturist for the last four years. And in 2015, I had the most revelational, re, re, revelational, yeah, experience where he took me to many places, and I would love for him to, you know, walk me through what I was going through at that time because there were so many things that were happening back then um but i'll bring him on he's on facetime with me on the other line um hi robin how are you hi Ray. Good, <laughs> good to see you too there's yeah, yeah, that's right. I, in the last say in the last couple of weeks i've seen you twice i was going to see you again but but i wasn't able to make it because i'm now into Woomba, which is a good 250 40 kilometers away from you so I just wasn't able to make it that third time but I'm definitely going to make my way there a few more times because there I'm on the precipice of such a big reawakening if you if I may call it that way and sure. um and 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 yeah and I know you're the top person for this to talk me through the things that I was going through, especially because you did the original work with me when I was able to go to uh, a past life experience the second time that I saw you. So I would have had perhaps close to a dozen sessions, if not 10, or I'm sure it's a dozen already uh, because yeah. you, you, you just do such great work. So please introduce yourself and, and, and tell us about your practice at 222 Traders Way in Corumban Waters, C222. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, please. Well, um, um, yeah, my name's Robin Timso. I've been an acupuncturist since 1980. Um, that's coming on to 39 years of practice. And um, I'm a great believer that as a practitioner, it is about practice. We're, we practice continually. It's not about you master something and, 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 and that's it. It's a, it's a continual evolution of uh, as a practitioner. And, and having said that, everything is, is from present moment and has a past and everything has a future. But if we can actually live in the moment and be connected to that, then it's very easy to, to start to create our own future. Now, most people have trouble because they're living in the past and, and the reason why they're living in the past is because they have so much energetic wavelengths or patterns ingraining into their present day lifestyle right. and their present day moment and so that's where to me uh, anything that anything that when you're not in the present is effectively an addiction mm. because you affect their repeated pattern so at the time when i saw you in 2015 I was carrying a lot of burdens, wasn't I? Um, I don't like to say you're carrying a lot of burdens. I like to say you were just there was a lot of energetic patterns that were repeating themselves that had had nothing to do with the present. Got it. And so, so, so because I approached it from that point of view, then we were able to go through each level of it one step at a time and help you start to unravel that. And as you unraveled it. You became more present and as you became more present then your being started to flourish again yes definitely and i felt so many shifts each session and even within the session i was feeling a lot of shifts and a lot of insights and um you know i i, I talked through the things that i was going through at that time which was the, my recovery um, yeah. Actually, it would have been 2014 even because my recovery was 2013, February 14. And yeah. and me and uh, at that time I was with um, Monk and he was telling me about your work. And, and, and they said, I recommend if you want to clear your meridians, if you want to really keep dropping the addictions that you have. Um, I've dropped the the bulk of the addictions but i think the reverberatory effects are still there because it was so ingrained and it was so deep within my psyche imagine methamphetamine right. and cocaine and right. men yeah. and porn and sex and things like that so i'm wondering if you even remember or what what was going through 
someone that is in new addiction, they're going to come in a new recovery, was in active addiction, managing their addiction well, doing a lot of work within themselves. Why is it important to see someone that is of your caliber been working in the, this industry for 39 years? Why was that important for me? And what did you bring through for me in those very first few instances? Yeah, well, I, th I think, let's first of all imagine that, that there's this big cobweb over your personality. It's like, a, like you know, it's like thrown over you. Mm -hmm. And you're struggling to find your way out of that. Yes. Right, so that's effectively like the energetic patterns of our past, whether it be past lifetime or related to many of our relationships that we've had in this lifetime. As those relationships become entangled, then those processes start to then infuse into our being. So then we have trouble living into the present and then then obviously what happens, it continually repeats itself. So our future becomes confused as well. So. What I like to do is like look look at the person's energetic pattern right from the beginning, take my diagnosis, and then I start to see where the little cobwebs are all creeping all over the personality. And sometimes it's, it manifests in physical disease. Sometimes it actually is just infused in their own personality and they're having trouble. Their the mental thoughts, their their belief systems, they're they're, they're all ingrained. Right? Mm. Usually, usually we can refine it down to one thing, and that's just fear, effectively. Yes. So then I start to work with the acupuncture understanding, because acupuncture works with energy. Yes. And I start to work with defragging the system and unraveling and taking all those little pieces of the cobweb off the being. But the problem is that you can't just take it all off the personality because they'll be exposed, they're vulnerable, they'd walk out into the world and they'd, they'd be like a newborn baby in, a, in an adult body. Hmm. So you have to sort of then start rebuilding the person and that's where I do a lot of counselling with, with my clients as we're needling them, as we're doing the energetic shifts. And so subtly, over a period of time, they start to get a lot stronger until, and at that point in time, they start to get you know, they start to get more direction in life and more presently. Yeah, I can definitely attest yeah. to that because there was a lot of talking in the beginning and you reassured me quite with a lot of the things that I was bringing to the table and you were quite skilled in, of course, in, 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 yeah. in walking me through what I was experiencing. And I even remember filling out a form which took me quite a long time to kind of just uh, give you a history of you know eczema that i had in the past or psoriasis or the other the, the the psychiatric stints and you know even you know like pelvic inflammatory disease so i i indicated all of that there so that you can have an idea and and you walk me through okay what was this from what happened here what happened there what were your experiences? And this wasn't all in one session, but it was over a period of time that you... Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm a great believer as a practitioner. I work with whatever presents itself. And whatever's presenting is really the first step that, that helps a person unfold into their pathway. But you have to understand also that everything is a process. It's a process of healing over a period of time. And there's no... Sometimes there's no one moment where it actually goes, well, that was the deciding moment that I actually changed. It's a gradual process that somehow lifts and, and transpires with, for the person. So they effectively, they start to raise their vibration. Definitely, definitely. Because for me, at that point in time, I wasn't raised to the level that I am now, but that's because I do a lot of inner work and a lot of cultivation. I mean, for the last... Uh, since November, I've been doing the cold showers that you recommended to me back then, that I did back then, and I did kind of in and out over the years since then. But now, ever since I've been really doing the Wim Hof breathing and the cold showers at the end of my hot shower to begin with, after I do Qigong or before I do meditation, depending on what my movements for the day, I find the cold showers are so releasing and, and there is a specific physiological response that my body is kind of, I, I feel some sort of an energy release. Could you walk me through why you recommended the sh cold showers and what that's all about? Um, yeah, well, let's, 
let's look at the byproduct of of lower vibration patterns. The byproduct mm-hmm. of lower vibration patterns, whether it be addictions to nicotine, alcohol, you know, medication, uh, lifestyles, and so forth. The, the, those vibrations create a toxic effect into the system. Mm-hmm. And so that then starts to imprint a pattern of energy within the being. And that shows up in Chinese diagnosis of the pulses, and you can tell the vibration of the organs, and I can feel certain things that aren't necessary no longer pure. Mm-hmm. So the, the object of treatment is to actually start to purify mm-hmm. the imbalances with the system. Yes. So when we're talking about the cold showers, that helps the process of detoxification, in my opinion. It helps shed the, 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 the toxic aspects of the vibrations within the system. By cleansing it, by releasing it, or is there a... Um, yeah, well, it's just the body's natural process to act to be able to detoxify wow through 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 the hot and cold hot and cold aspects of it all so that's when the body wants to wow and but having said that yeah so 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 cold is when everything contracts and when it's hot not like a hot shower everything opens now opening and closing of the pores the opening and closing of the pores of the skin is related to the heart function Right. So if we look at the heart function being infused with perverse or pathogen energy into what's called pericardium, then that's where the toxic effects start to ingrain into the body. So you're opening and closing in the pores to actually release effectively toxins, whether it be energetic toxins, emotional toxins, or physical toxins that come through the skin. Right. And, that's, and, and you're familiar with Wim Hof, of course. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so the breathing techniques and the cold showers is specifically for that mechanism that you just mentioned, the the contracting. Yes. And, and, and I remember when I did Bikram Yoga, um, we did it obviously in the, in the sauna type conditions so that our joints yes. are able to be more pliable and we're able to move into the asanas or the forms a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't... I just look at it from an energetic point of view and an orbital point of view. So the opening and closing of the pores is stimulation of the heart function. Uh-huh. And the hot and cold aspects have a lot to do with, with the kidney function. So, and the kidney relates to the left brain, right brain. And so everything starts to become networked within, mm-hmm. whether it's you know, from a positive point of view or from a negative point of view. Obviously, when we're working with the, with the spirit, we're deleting the negative vibrations out of the storm. Right. Now, the natural default of the human body is pure. Hmm. Yes. So, so all we're doing is releasing all the negative, negative or imbalanced elements yes. to help the body purify itself effectively. Right. And excuse so you're not me. Anything. You're, not, you're, not, you're not, all we're doing is unfolding energetic patterns and releasing them. Right. Returning it back to that pure state. Yeah. Got it. And excuse me, because I'm just looking straight at the camera, so but I'm definitely listening. <laughs> I just want to connect with the viewers and bring them through uh, so that they can understand this. So, yeah. Uh, wow. Because there's a lot there. Why, how, a lot of people have asked me how addiction specifically, let's say, let's mention one. Is that okay? Like, let's sure. say someone smokes pot a lot. And and they're in your table, and that's really the drug of choice. How okay. a, a, apart from the many things that that's happening, what would you feel in their pulse from their organs? What are the things that would prompt you in your, you know, f- four decades of practice almost? What are the things that you're so, looking for when you when you intuit into their energy field? Yeah, the interesting thing is that when a person comes in and they've done a lot of um, pot, the, the vibration is very obvious. And, and it usually I can, already can tell exactly what, like I often will ask them if you do too much marijuana, yes. uh, because it actually infuses into a liver imbalance. And it's a specific feeling in the pulses that I can, that, that I feel that tells me. And sometimes I'll hear it in their voice too, that, that they're like they're speaking through their vibrations, right? But so, so let's say, use the example, um, marijuana, let's say the pure state of the human being is to marry with 
the being. Mm-hmm. What marijuana or addictions do is that mimics, but it actually marries in the opposite way. So then it pretends that to be or give the person a feeling of well-being, mm. but it's only to a past. Right. And so that's when you know, it keeps replacing itself. But what we have to do is we have to turn the space around so the person starts to marry again in the, in the purest sense. In the purest sense, they no longer have the addiction. Yes. They're just more connected. Right. So... so I, well, I would like to say that we're replacing the addiction with being more connected. Yes, and there's a lot of um, not only evidence, but there's a lot of even TED talks about one specifically by Johan Hari, where he talks about the antithesis or what would stop or what would why people soothe their pain through addictions is they want to be more connected, whether to their father or their mother or their spouse or their work or their clients. So, you know, um, and, and addiction has many faces. And I've not seen someone in my practice with already by the thousand, not by the thousands, about 800 um, or, or even a thousand one-on-one sessions that I've recorded where it's only pot addiction. It's, it's always, right? It's always pot with a bit of alcohol, with a bit of porn addiction, with a bit of food addiction perhaps or something like that. And even calling it addiction feels icky to me because it's like putting them in a, you know, if you were, like even I said to you before, it bur- what was burdening me, what was getting in the way. And even now in my uh, ascension or in, in my growth, I know that even calling it addiction might not be the right thing to do. Um, I would agree with you on that, but everybody else sees it as or, or, or perceives it as that word. So I would, but I would agree with you because the moment you call it an addiction, it, 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 you're, you're actually classifying it and you're making it a conscious thing. Yes. You see, that what I like to work with is the opening of the, the awareness process. So everybody is aware, then we wake up to the concept that, that something is not correct as regards our pure or impure lifestyle or thought patterns. Yeah. And then we start to move into releasing impure thoughts and becoming more pure, effectively. Yeah, now, for sure. acupuncture helps the way of being be more pure, you see. So in the balancing of the pulses and taking the diagnosis, effectively what I feel in the pulse is the impurities or the imbalances that are associated. Now, having said that, for me to actually truly understand impurities, I have to also understand what purity is. Mm. Now, if I have not felt purity, how can I actually treat impurities? Exactly. And that's what I've... Even in my thesis, and I'd love to talk to you about your thesis as well, but in my thesis, that's one of the frameworks or that's one of the most pivotal discoveries that I've found is the therapeutic relationship between the client and myself. And I'm not able to bring through like right now because, again, I'm struggling with smoking cigarettes sporadically. So I will choose not to work with clients specifically with that because that would compromise the delivery of the therapeutic um, intervention that I'm delivering for them. So for Um, me... Yeah, you could look at it that way. But the other way, you could also look at it as the fact that you can really relate to the client because you Mm -hmm. actually have a similar type of addiction. So, you know... But not while I'm in the active addiction of it, or can I still work effectively with people while I'm still struggling with it? I don't think uh, so. I, I, I think we all learn right together. You see, the only reason why I believe that I've, I've clarified about and woken up to a lot of things is because I've been a practitioner for 38 years. And, and I always say that my clients have actually taught me a lot of different things about energetic patterns and life and healing and and, and really getting more insight into that is based on the fact of the work I've been doing. Wow. You see. Yeah. And, and it runs counter to what I was taught for four years. And, you know, so Possibly. definitely. And so, you know, I was with this monk and it, it, it was, um, there was a lot of things that I'm trying to reconcile in my head of the teaching and the practice and the person themselves. And, 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 and that's that's a big one to really uh, understand and get on top of because for me, 
I feel like that's what's driving me back to my addiction. But then I'm like, no, hang on. No one is in charge of what I'm thinking and what I'm going through. So back to this um, drawing board of what is is that teaching or what is it triggering inside of me that makes me feel like there's something that I'm, I'm not at ease with. Um, yeah. Uh, well, what I would say, based on where you are now, compared to where you were back then, four years ago, five years ago, was mm-hmm. that you were more more in a pathway of looking for help on outside of yourself still, wanting to be rescued about where you were because you were in a pretty confused state. Yes. So you were, you were trapped in that web. And so at the time, it was appropriate for you to be involved in those type of therapies with, with what you were doing because it helped you at least find a pathway forward. Right. But it was actually at the time when you started working with me, I, I actually remember talking to you about why 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 was your head shaved? Remember you? We yes. Used to joke about that. Like, why, yes. Why are you pretending to be somebody based on the past rather than your present self? Yes. And so you eventually started to come out of that. And then really when you started to come out of that, your state of consciousness outgrew where you were at. And so yes. you were no longer needing to be rescued. Yes. So the type of work I do is not about rescuing a person. The type of work I do is about helping you help yourself. Yes. And as you start to help yourself, I mean, obviously you need a little bit of a hand up and it's supportive, but I don't do anything more than my 50%. Exactly. It's really up to the person to actually outgrow their state of awareness. Yeah. And so it's up to them to change. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you would have noticed that now. Oh, for sure. I, mean, I feel so much better. I look good. I feel good. It's from the heart. And and I'm actually celebrating my divine feminine, my my hair, my makeup, um, you know. That's it. And, and, I, and I love it. Whereas before, even if I thought I looked a certain way, it was decrepit in the way that it felt still shallow and void. Like before I met you, before I met Monk, you know, I see a lot of pictures where it will look a certain way. It might feel a certain way. It might even be looked at by the opposite sex as a certain way, but that's not what I felt. And there's a big yeah, difference. All, 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 of, all of that was just a, another form of, of, the, of addiction. Addiction transpires itself and and tricks you into actually doing something else to appear differently, mm. but effectively the addiction is just carried forward. It's it's only when you actually start to go totally beyond that particular pattern that you actually start to actually now outgrow the the addiction. The addiction falls away. You no longer need that energetic pattern to survive in this world. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. So with pot, there's a specific frequency or there's a specific pulsating effect that you can feel because you've been doing this for a long time and that becomes your diagnosis and that becomes the needles yes. that you put into the meridians. Yes, yes. It, that's that's a, that's a very specific form of, uh, I'd say, skill that I've developed. And, and a lot of practitioners, I'm not, not the only practitioner, to have developed that skill. My, my, my skill is very unique to me, I believe, yes. as a practitioner. Yeah, I do, do, do know that now. And I do accept that. That's my uniqueness. Um, but I think all practitioners, as they're, they're evolving as practitioners, they will go through the process mm-hmm. and refine. You know, some, some, some master and move very fast, and some you know, practitioners are very, very different. They'll work just on symptomatic levels, you know. Yes, so exactly. that's the beauty of it all. That's that's the beauty of, of that we're all different to some degree too. That's right. And <laughs> and we were speaking when I rang you the other day about other people and and not this is just an observation of practitioners that could be out there that are delivering a certain service, whether it's mediumship, whether it's psychic, whether it's tarot cards, whether it's coaching. You know, there's a lot of people that call themselves coaches and unfortunately when it it become it can become very dangerous when the people are in a sense corrupted by by their own limiting beliefs and still operating from the place of void or 
uh, shame or, or hatred or inactive addiction still. Th there's a, a, a specific difference and I can see it now and I can yeah. feel it now within my own self. Yeah. Uh, and, and it really does behoove me. It really yeah. makes my heart quite sad when I see traditional Chinese medicine practitioners, acupuncturists, coaches, people that are not in line or in integrity with what they're bringing through. Did you want to speak a little bit about that? Because that's important. Well, okay. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a process. Whether that person is ready to evolve and move past their levels of personal addiction, which is effectively it's their ego. Yes. You know, it's, um, and that ego then locks them into our belief system that they're, they're greater than you know, for the client and the client needs them. And so they're attending what they call the guru. And, you know, and on and on it goes. But the, 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 the practitioner doesn't understand how much of a price they'll end up paying by taking that, that role on because that's just a form of addiction. Yes. Now, in my opinion, that's because they've been doing that for, for many, many lifetimes. Yes. If, if a practitioner has, has a sense of, of a higher purpose and that higher purpose then will help that soul or that, that practitioner evolve. So that's really what we do. I mean, I've been evolving, and I have to say that I'm still evolving. I'm, I'm never going to stop evolving and growing and, and, and refining my service. Yes, yes, and that's yeah. why I love um, seeing conscious practitioners awakened, uh, uh, people that are seeing through the veil in, 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 a, in a, a higher frequency, higher level of alignment with their mind, body, yeah. spirit, because it's... It, you know, but but there's still a lot of great people out there that are quite powerful in their modality, um, but their body might not be showing it, or vice versa. They might be in their body quite strong and quite developed, but their spirit might not be the foundation of where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, and I'm even the mind as well, isn't it? So it's an interplay between well, the three. Yeah. But I, I also have to come back to, to the one thing is that there are, they are at where they're at. If you have a sense that you want to be a client of theirs or a patient of theirs, it's a that's, match. that's exactly, there's a marriage there somewhere. Yeah, you see? wow. Right or wrong, good or, I always use the term you know, good, bad or indifferent. It's, 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 it's purely up to the individual. As long as you can exercise your free will, to actually be with that practitioner or not, you know, it's really an individual thing. So that's how I operate as a practitioner myself. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So that there is also as a client, um, the, the, what they're feeling and why they're attracted to that and then vice versa. So it's, it's, yeah. it's always very, um, it, it is complex, isn't it? There's a lot of factors involved in a decision for someone to see a, a therapist, a healer, an acupuncturist, and and um, what will be will be, and what will be brought through will be brought through at the level of understanding each person can bring to the table. Absolutely, and, yeah. and then then the, the 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 instance between the practitioner and the patient or the client at any given moment can spark a form of healing in itself. Wow. And of course it does. And, and I, I'm, I'm feeling that now that my very voice or my very presence brings about shifts in, in, in people around me and, yes. and, and vice versa. They're, whatever they're carrying, whether it's higher, the frequency, I can feel the difference between the, the outside or the external. So you, you feel it from a pulsating organ perspective but you also know about the the auric field and and beyond that and not only that you can go because you've been doing it for almost four decades you can go and and follow the trajectory of the energy to their past lives even which you've done with me a few times so exactly Maria, right now because you're getting a glimpse of that is only because of our interaction yes exactly you, you were the I'm catalyst in the fact that my vibration is helping your vibration get a glimpse of that because I live in that world. I live in that concept of, of understanding what's pure and impure, especially when I'm working. Yes. So, and especially when I'm working with energy, especially when I'm putting in needles, needle therapy. 
because the needle therapy is really what taps me into that little connection from a higher source. Yes, so we'll definitely go into needle therapy because that's needed, but um, behind that, is traditional Chinese medicine the underpinning or is acupuncture the modality? Could you explain? Because I'm not familiar with this subject. Um, <laughs> it's, when you're talking about you know, two to 5,000 years of history. Yes, please. Illuminate me. <laughs> in in half an hour, <laughs> no, you know. But you know, just for the layman, for people that are because you know, definitely if you're in the Gold Coast or even if you're not, make a specific trip to see Dr. Tim So and also what we're bringing through in the future is is I'm going to get a lot of advice and um uh you know, just working with him to bring about the Vitalis Villas retreats that I'm organizing at the end of the year and, and as a legacy piece to arrest or mitigate or be the answer, a solution to the problems of addiction issues in the Philippines and in that province of Ilocos Sur. So you and I have agreed that, that you're going to be in the committee for that because, you know, I need your 40 years of hard work or 38, 39, however long to ask exactly what you've done you were the catalyst to to me seeing deeper into the veil and into my past life but you brought me into four past lives and um and i wouldn't have yeah. seen that without seeing you that one fine day in 2014 i'm sure it was 2014 i've got to go back to the receipts <laughs> i mean they, yeah i mean they, they, the pathway that I live is based on the fact that, that I, I really have a strong sense of my life purpose. Yes. Now, in the process of me refining and discovering my life purpose, I, there's two things. There's one, when I was 21, I graduated as an acupuncturist. Yes. I always say that I was too too young and ignorant to the ego of how, how, you know, how society operated. That's my, it was my ignorance that actually got me forward took me into acupuncture itself. Wow. Now, as a medical practitioner for, you know, for, for, as you say, 38 to 40 years, my mind has now actually caught up to my my innocence, if that makes sense. Yes. The your curiosity, the your your wonderment, yes. your childlike, yes. wow, well, will I receive what they say? What about if I examine that myself with this body or this physiology or this meridian line with that type of emotional attachments and that type of familial structure and that type of ancestral background and so on and so forth? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm a great believer that any, any client who decides to have a session with me at any given time, there is going to be a pathway of resonance that belongs to many, many lifetimes before working together and or um, do me doing the work of another great person that is, can't be there at, at this point in time. I know that I that people are sent to me, in my opinion, sent to me that are looking for uh, their particular healer, but that particular person lives on another side of the planet and so that, that, that I can connect with them in that way and do the same work. So, so therefore we can be... You know, we can do the work all over the planet without actually having to physically be there. Yes, and I think the collective consciousness is helping that shift. Yes. For, yeah, because, yes. you know, yes. um, however many years ago, I, I, I always did 80, 85% of my work was online or yes. via Skype, Zoom, phone, FaceTime, that type of thing. And, and and the further they are from me on a geographic level, the, the weaker I think my connection with them. But now I'm not feeling that anymore. I feel like if I'm connecting with them like this, like what we are now, I know that I'm as connected to, to the viewers that will listen to this in whatever time, space, continuum there might be. Yeah, yeah, well, back in <laughs> early... Um... I think it was around about the early part of the century, probably about two, I think it was about 2000, the year 2000, I wrote a book to actually, the reason why I wrote it, because back then I was seeing 200 patients a week and I became very tired, yeah, 200 patients a week, a lot of patients. <laughs> so I, I became
I'm very tired of saying the same thing over and over again. And you may find that with your, you know, if you have a lot of people in, in, in a given day, it becomes very tiring to talk about rejection five times over. Yes. You right. get rejection fatigue by the seventh person, you know. It's like, oh, not in there. But you'll never do that. But in your mind, you'll feel that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I wrote a book called Healing Comes With Open Feeling. It was my my manual of self-help. Mm. And um, it's been, what, maybe 15, 16 years now that that's been in operation. And so every uh, my distance clients actually all have uh, are all members of the one-on-one -on -one mentoring which is the book healing comes with open feelings so they get a copy of the book and they do a chapter at a time so it's a 12-week program wow and so that's it's everything i do except there's no needles i don't use needles obviously because it's distance right wow <laughs> And, yeah. and that is the same heart that I, 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 I had when I wrote my book, Kill Your Addiction Before It Kills You, because it walks through without me having to retell my story because they're telling the story of active addiction. So in my coaching, instead of me having to go through it over and over again, you know, in chapter three, when I went through my suicide issues, what, yes. what resonate, what do you think I did there that you can apply or something like that? So I don't have to keep going through that. Absolutely. So that's the same. Exactly. Exactly. That. That's why. You know. The. I mean, most clients that that actually participate in the program do really well, and and I, I I'm very pleased to say that that that, that it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process, and, and 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 every client is always walks away at the end of the twelve weeks having evolved because because it mm -hmm. it really does help them um, unfold their. Their, their emotional patterns. That's why it's called healing comes with open feeling. Healing comes with open feeling. So how do people get involved in this 12-week program? Just get in touch with you via Facebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, and or message either way. And we set up something and we, I'll, I'll, I'll explain exactly the costs involved. And I email them the copy of the book and so they get that straight away and, and they just go through one chapter at a time. And Is there... Enough only process wow and is there a hard copy or it's all online so that it's used convenient? to have a hard copy but these days with with internet and, and electronics now it's now a pdf yeah. beautiful oh that's really good did you want to tell your number over over the line like this or just facebook how would you like them to connect or put um, it in the it's yeah they just facebook me on um Robin Simso Acupuncturist, you'll, you'll search for me and you, you'll see me and then we'll connect that way via Messenger or and then if, if, if need be, we can, we can set up another hey. So, <laughs> so that's, what, that's the Facebook picture that you will be looking for. Yeah. And, um, and, and I'll definitely, well, I have, I did tag him before, but the, the powers that be behind Facebook didn't want us to go on for whatever reason. That's okay. We will get there and this will be uploaded via YouTube and I'll be, I'll be tagging you and I'll do it. I'll triangulate the system and do it that way. Um, but whatever happens, this will be on the beacon of light radio. Um, I'm going to slot it in on a Tuesday. There's a few Tuesdays where, um, there's already a guest, uh, but when I do, I'll, I'll tag you in it and I'll put the show notes and I'll also put the, the SoundCloud link so that your clients can download it. And Absolutely. yeah, and also the iTunes podcast link if they have uh, an iPhone or an iPad and they want to listen to this while they're driving and all of that beautiful yeah. things. Oh, I mean, we could do another interview at some stage and and work with a particular process or, or addiction or thought pattern and or past lifetime concept. Yes, um, and that's um, why I life, wanted... You know, we can go into much more depth. Um, you know, the, 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 I'm open to actually being of service in, in, in any way, shape or form. So, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I quite enjoy this, these types of interviews and, and chats. Yes, and because... Like, it's like really easy. I definitely and because also that's why I wanted to go on Facebook because I know there's a lot of people that could ask questions and that's when we can get very specific because yeah, sure. when it's like this I can only talk about my experience and perhaps clients and until you, you know until you're following a timeline of a specific case it's better illuminated that way isn't it 
Well, I think so, yeah. But I mean, I mean, we can answer comments. I mean, if people have comments on the YouTube video or, or, or below, um, uh, you know, I can read through them and, 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 and we could decide to maybe do a follow-up to help um, some of the comments. So if people have, you know, a question, then just by all means, make a comment and, and um, you know, we'll, somebody will, will get back to them and talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, for sure. And have you uh, gone away from the practice of 200 clients a week now and then maybe they're now in the membership group, isn't it? Because you've evolved in your practice and you want more autonomy and freedom. And, you know, when we get on and been doing it, was, uh, I, I can imagine with you, you probably are not doing that much now. You're doing... No, I mean, I, 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 I live a life of quality these days, so... So, I mean, back then, it was a very interesting and, and important phase of my career. I do believe that was a good, it was a good phase to be involved in. Yes. But, you know, uh, as, as, as time has gone by, I don't believe that I, I want to practice that way anymore. So I, I do control the number of appointments that I see. Um, I do know what feels right, and, and I'll take a client on when I know it's, it's correct. Yes. And, and, and sometimes I'll, you know, I won't take that person on straight away. I'll say I'll get back to you. Yes. Um, so I'm discerning all the time. I'm protecting my own balance too. I, I, I mean, we, I need to live, you know, harmoniously for myself. So um, that's a very important process um, that I do respect. Yes. But I'll, at the same time, I want to be of service and I want to help my um, you know, fellow mankind to, to evolve and, and, and and do, you know still do good work on the planet that's absolutely exactly that, and and you similar. yeah you sure do because yeah. when we first met and i told you i was completing my doctorate and you really opened up to there's a lot of do you have to go soon no, no i'm good okay yeah, good. yes yeah. and 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 you were talking about how the needles is really important and critical in in you know, with all the meridians and the pulse. And I'll, I'll let you explain because you're more well-versed in that world. Why? And, and we actually, I started asking about traditional Chinese medicine. What is traditional Chinese medicine? Well, let's look back at the history of, 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 of let's say, the evolution of Chinese medicine in, in, in Asia, in China particularly. I mean, it, it did originate in China, and there are many dynasties. The Han Long Dynasty is the is the dynasty that 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 my particular style of acupuncture mm -hmm. evolved from. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was after that dynasty that a lot of what's called TCM or traditional Chinese medicine was evolved, and there is a big big difference because communism was the the mainstay force behind behind traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, which yeah. actually to, today is, is taught more in, in the colleges. Right. And, and so a lot of practitioners evolve and they come out as TCM practitioners and, and um, sometimes they feel dissatisfied and they, and they, they do more study and um, eventually a practitioner will find their way or, or they won't. They'll, they'll stay stuck in a form of therapy that's predominantly in my opinion, um, based on, you know, the communist aspect of, of belief. Right. So Han Lung, when, where would that have originated from? I dare say it would be what's traditionally being taught in those, um, you know, art registered training organizations in Australia that do TCM and things like that. Would yeah. would it be with another dynasty, or is it still stem from the Han Lung dynasty? Um, <laughs> Who knows what they're teaching, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a very different question. And, and the truth of the matter is, I haven't been in college yes. over 30, 38 years, so I really don't know. What, what you know. I do know is that some practitioners who come, you know, I meet up with who are just fresh out of college, I, I pick their brain to see where they are. Uh, where they're at as pr practitioners and sometimes when well, like everything you know uh, a, a new fresh practitioner who's just graduated really doesn't have a strong sense of the practical uh, experience so that just takes time you can't you can't rush that process you know for uh, sure and is there um 
So someone has X amount of therapy money for, or needle money or TCM money, <laughs> and they've got a choice between someone that's got a new practice, they're quite young, and someone like yourself. What what would be most prudent, more more wise, and why would that be? Because that's where a lot of people are at. You know, they they're seeking what they need to to have. Why would it be that they should really practice discernment and go for the people that are more awake and more consciously inclined to give you the best, um, well, the highest kind of energetic outcome for yourself? Because I know that's what you've done to me. And, yeah, and I haven't I'll seen that with anyone. Me. And I have gone to a few people. I'm like, oh, not going to that one again. <laughs> that was like, gobbled me a bit. Oh, <laughs> you know, that hurt or something, you know. And it's, yeah. yeah. Well, well, let me put it this way. Because it's a very important for me to actually not have an attachment of greater than, lesser than, better than, or I understand. not as good. I don't really come from that perspective. How I operate is just how I operate. Sure. And if it resonates with a client that, or a patient that wants to see me, then that's how I work. Yes. I don't believe in, in the hierarchy of, of ego. I really don't. And so I don't really, I can't really answer that one from that point of view. Got I it. won't, to tell you the truth. Um, if a client wants to go to somebody who's fresh out of college because it's something that resonates, then that yes. is exactly perfect for that person. You know, it's not. It's not right or wrong. It's, it's appropriate uh, for that person. Right, right. And I guess what I'm just saying is that when I have gone to uh, practitioners, I could feel whether it's helped me or not. Just like when you get a, a bad massage or a, see, not the yeah, hierarchy, exactly. but you know, there, there are certain ways that I felt that I thought, well, hang on, maybe that's not the one I'll go back to again. That's definitely not the one I'll go back to again. And that's definitely not in resonance with what I wanted and I had an idea going in from from the literature and from the shop front that is a certain way and 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 I guess my point is sometimes people clump it all in the one thing when it's really practitioner specific correct yeah absolutely and, and, and it's moment to moment so you know you, you learn something from realizing that it's not appropriate for you, if that makes sense. So yes. there is something gained. Yes, for sure. Because then, you know, then, then and I do, because I journal a lot, I write a lot, I, I read a lot yeah. of literature with, with all the other academics in the field. And, and then it makes me examine the frameworks and all of their thesis to kind of think, okay, well, what led me to the door of that? nice glossy shop yeah. front <laughs> right and what was i looking for and what did it present to me even if i thought a certain way what can i still get out of it where can yes, i take absolutely. what i yeah, received from everything that? has its right time and timing yes. i remember i remember just recently a patient rang me up and said uh, she wanted an appointment for rheumatoid arthritis and I said, yeah, absolutely. And I said, well, we'll need to fill out a file for you. And she said, oh, no, 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 no. I said, oh, oh really? And she said, you know, I saw you. I saw you 22 years ago. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't have that file. I don't have that file. <laughs> and she said, the reason why I know it was 22 years is because my son was overdue by... Um, like something like a week overdue, and he's now 22. So that was why she came to see me 22 years ago. And and isn't that funny how they um, people and they see me, you know, that people are still accustomed or uh, their energetic field is still in, still in the past, and they think that that would still be appropriate or that that file will serve <laughs> for you to make a diagnosis on. <laughs> well, well, no, but that's an interesting thing about the human condition, Maria. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you go back to, say, you know, one of your favorite cities that you've traveled in the world, let's say, what, what's your favorite city? One of your favorite cities? Oh, I love them all, but let's say Tokyo, Japan. Okay. So if you go to Tokyo, Japan, if we put you there right now and you started to feel hungry, you would know exactly which restaurant you wanted to go to, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> I'm getting salivating now just thinking about that. Oh, exactly. yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, everything has its time and timing. 
um, even though 22 years had passed, she, she just totally thought of me when she wanted more acupuncture. Right. Um, so it's just like, you know, it's just like anything in life. And so to me, um, obviously I made an impression. Obviously there was a connection there that didn't, that, that, that doesn't go. It, it stays mm. with the person for a whole life. Now, that's why I know that we all live many, many lifetimes. And, and so when I meet a patient for the first time this life, and there's something that's deeper than that, then usually it's because we've known each other before. Wow. That's See, a... and so that's how we, that's, if you start to re- recognize that in life, then you become a lot freer in, your, in, 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 the, in the pathway that you live. Yes. Now, I just want to take it back. So we did start with addiction, but addiction is so complex and it's never just that one thing. So rheumatoid arthritis, I know for a fact that um, one of the literature that I read, you know, gout and rheumatoid arthritis, children of parents, children that had parents that were alcoholics, um, you know, their, their, their offsprings were more... Uh, the evidence showed a power, uh, you know, the, 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 the statistical power said that, you know, that the, the children had more propensity for arthritis. So in, in examining that and thinking that hypothesis, why do you think that is from the work that you do? Uh, well, see, because it, everything, everything is an energy imbalance, whether it's a physical disease like rheumatoid arthritis or an addiction to alcohol or an addiction to, to cigarettes. We're, we're, you always have to remember that we're one human being. We're not separated. So mm. addictions and, and, and disease is one of the same, really. Yes. It depends on just how far it has manifested into the physical body. That's really where I, I look at it. Yes, so yes. If it's manifested to a point where it actually now is creating a, a degenerative changes in the body, so that, that that's what we've got to address. Now, yes. the truth of the matter is you can reverse a lot of the degenerative changes. Yes, But, yes. I mean, I don't have the answer to, to, to eternal youth, though, at this yes. point. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and another interesting thing is my mom developed um, breast cancer. Uh, a few years yeah. ago and it, 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 it really metastasized into something bigger and bigger and, and worse and worse. And so she was hoding me to go to, to get my, my um, breast screen because it's, it's free now for people over 40 and things like that. So I went, uh-huh. yeah, so I went and, and had my first breast screen, which is really where they, they take your breast and they really measure it and they really like squash it and they have this x-ray thing that, that that they put on on there and while because it was a half an hour affair so while I was yeah. there we were talking and and I said you know I'm an addiction specialist and I'm completing my doctorate hopefully you know if I can get it together in my thesis using the metaphysical will be approved by my supervisors <laughs> but anyway um and, and then I was talking about that and and I said that wow so many diseases can be traced back to some sort of a mal adaptive addiction issue whether it's poly multi drug addiction or behavioral and all of that and then she says on that specifically breast cancer they have because she's the doctor and she's the one measuring it she said breast cancer is is highly correlated to again alcoholism and i'm like can you give me the journal for that and and we haven't connected since then but she definitely can can she said definitely <laughs> and i'm like yeah. and, and, and that's true <laughs> i mean everything is specific to the client of whether course it be, whether it be you know whatever dynamics that they have they present themselves with and that that's the interesting part of my work because every individual becomes very specifically different there is not one client that i treat that is exactly like you maria you are unique you're specific to you to your particular vibration. So that's me as a practitioner having the skill to actually work with your unique set of parameters. And then, you know, I walk into the next patient and that's another totally different person that I'm working with. Wow. So yeah, yeah. That's yes. that's that's the level of work that I, I, I choose to work with these days. So if I, I can't do that when I'm seeing two hundred patients a week, it's not possible. It, it's too draining. So yes. now I've refined it down to a level where I know it just flows better. 
definitely. And and traditional Chinese medicine would would entail herbs and all of that type of thing. That's that's part it can, of it. Can okay. I don't use that anymore because it's not my specific forte. Right. So, so some practitioners do use that as their forte. I, I don't. I don't use that mainly because I, when I graduated, you know, herbs was 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 not something that was readily available to be taught in the colleges. Yes, got it. So we, we will wrap this up because I know for a fact that you've agreed that we can do this mo- monthly or bi-monthly or however your time yeah. permits because I think all we did was crack open a little little window into TCM and acupuncture and addiction. And, and we like you said, it's thousands and thousands of years that it's evolved and even there was a, a metaphysical conference that's happening and one of the... Uh, one of the speakers was David Wilcox. You familiar with David Wilcox? No, no, no. That that's all right. Um, so he even said that collectively the energy is shifting so much because everyone's having all sorts of insights and awakening and interplay of people's energy mixing with each other that he doesn't even know what he's going to talk about on April 29 at the Integratron because it just changes every day. This is the new paradigm and then this new world and then it's like, boom, 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 change again, yeah. change yeah, again. And, and, and that's, 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 ain't that the truth? Ain't that the that's, truth? That's exactly how we all live as, as, as craft, skillful practitioners. We, we, we don't make anything... Yes, I, I used to do like, manuals no. when I used to do workshops. Now I'm like, no, what do you want me to do? I'll make it on the spot and exactly. things like that. Yeah. It's all dependent on the vibration of what's presenting itself at the time. Yeah. Yes. But you know, having said that, we can pull against. You know, we can pull out all our resources yes. at any given time in our arsenal of knowledge and, and experience and wisdom. We can, Definitely. as practitioners, we have that skill. So I, yes. I know that you. you you're developing that skill very quickly now. So. Definitely. And I had a, so I came from the Philippines and then I had a purpose built workshop that they wanted me to do, um, yeah. you know, a talk on. So the, the, like it was already sifting through my head cause I knew the date. So when I sat down, I've done thousands of slides, you know, so I just put the slide together in one sitting duh, 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 duh. and then even when I got there, I didn't yeah. even go with the slides because I was reading the people that were there, the 20, 30 people in the room, and I was just going up, this doesn't apply, you know, and then I'll see something and I'm like, yep, this one here, boom, for that person. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and this is the level of, and, and I want to discuss that in the next ones, you know, the the doctoral studies and, and, and you know, a specific, when, when someone gets a doctor in their name, why that's different and not to be revered and not from ego, but why the quality of the research and the critical analysis is definitely deeper than someone right off college, right? Definitely. There's an unequivocal well, that's, that's difference there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, we, we'll leave it at this. Thank you, Dr. Robert Timso, for being here. I will see you My soon. <laughs> I definitely can't wait to keep consulting with you for the retreat and take you to Vitalis Villas. Everyone of Vitalis Villas, I'm tagging you because we are taking Robin uh, there. That would be wonderful, yeah. For sure, for sure we will do that. And we'll, I'll have him on again soon. So if there's any questions when I upload this on YouTube and when I put it on, on Facebook and all the different bipolar and anxiety and domestic violence groups and pages that I have, um, yeah, just ask the question and we'll get Robin back in. And uh, yeah, any last words before we uh, end the show, Robin? No, no, I, I, I think that was, I mean, I actually enjoyed the process of, of, of talking to you and, and seeing what you know evolved and came through. And I look forward to, to talking to you more in the future and, and, and developing a, a better relationship with all the listeners. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's the listeners that are gaining gaining from from what we you and I talk about. So you know, definitely. Hopefully, we'll be able to impart some of our experience, our wisdom, and our knowledge to yes. to others, so that they benefit. It's it's all about that. Yeah, it sure is. And kill your addiction show. It's about killing the addiction, not humanity, not exactly. the person. <laughs> so I won't exactly. say anything because I'm going to the Philippines. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Robin, again very much. 
Thank you to all the listeners, and we'll see you next week at the Kill Your Addiction Show. Bye. <laughs>